Thank you, Santosh, for that, for the words to uh, this morning. It's likely going to be two camps of people who, two camps of responses to what we heard today. One camp will say, I agree, I accept what, I've, what has been spoken. Another may say, will say, I disagree with what has been spoken. But there's, a, there's yet a third set of people, even fewer, who will take what we've heard today home on their knees and look at those scriptures, especially those in Revelations that he talked on, and ask the Lord, what are you saying to me from what I heard today? Very few Christians do that. To go back and say, Lord, speak to me. Go back to that Revelation 7 that we heard, Revelations 14. I say, Lord, what would you say to me? What is, I imagine, I want to say maybe many of us even here or even watching have not taken time on those two chapters. Revelations is not a common, uh, one of those familiar uh, books of the Bible. But yet the Lord is speaking to us from there as well. And I might add, I mean, the, the, the essence of what I heard today, Jesus Christ is coming back for his bride, a pure, spotless, and holy bride. Not Africans, not Americans, not, New, not the Republicans, Democrats, not, not rich, not poor. He's coming back for a people who are devoted to him. A pure and a spotless bride, it says in Ephesians 5. I hope you're part of that. If you are, the test is you will thirst to keep your garments pure. The essence of the message again for me is Jesus is coming for a pure and spotless bride. Revelations 19 talks about that also, the marriage of the Lamb, those who will be there, those who have kept their garments pure, they will be given a white robe, which it says is the righteousness of the saints. Test your own life. I need to test mine. Is my desire to keep myself pure, even as he is pure, as it says in First John. So this is very important what we heard today. I want to read a set of verses again in Revelations. Revelations, I think, as I think on it more and more, the conclusion of that book to me is, Olu, keep yourself pure. Jesus is coming back soon, as we heard. Many dismiss it. Nothing has happened, Peter says in 2 Peter 3. But the Lord is yet coming back and is coming back for those who are keeping their garments, part of his body, and those who are keeping their garments pure. Revelations 3 talks about that church in Sardis. In the midst of the church, Jesus says there, there are some, Revelations 3 verse 4. I don't know if your Bible uses this word. There are few. My Bible says that, Revelations 3, 4. Maybe it uses, your Bible uses a different word. There are few in the midst of the congregation, maybe this church, maybe the church worldwide, there are few. We heard that. Broad is the way that leads to death. Narrow is the way that leads to, to life. Very few. Jesus says here in Revelations 3, 4, there are few within that church in Sardis who have not defiled their garments. They are the ones who will walk with me. We heard that today also. In that marriage feast, the bride is the one walking with the bridegroom. Revelations 3, 4 here says, the ones that will walk with me are the ones who have kept their garments. They will walk with me in white, in purity, for they are worthy. He that overcomes, verse 5, shall be clothed in white garments. I will not blot out his name from the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to us. Even this morning, I started by saying some will dismiss. Some may say, okay, I agree, I accept. But very few will go back and say, Jesus, what are you saying to me? Where am I in light of what I've heard today? And the reason why we hear such, such uh, the type of thing we heard today is Many uh, in the so-called churches thinking they are walking with Jesus, but may not be. We heard that word, will receive a shock of their lives when the Lord comes. Many have said, Lord, Lord, Matthew 15, verse 8, Jesus says, many profess me with their mouths. Their hearts are far from me. This is happening. All we try to do is this church, in this church first to make sure we are walking with him. 
and to sound the alarm, few will hear and heed. Few. That's a terrible word. Few. When I say terrible, I mean it's scary. I may be there. Many crowds in the big churches, the small churches, all around. Christian, Christian, Christian. Am I Christian? But very few hunger to keep their garments pure. Very few. Are you part of that? I believe the words of Jesus. Few find that way. Very few. I want to be part of that. Amos 3.3 3 says, ask this question, how can two walk except they be in agreement? That word, word walk, again, stands out to me from the message today. Walking with Jesus. If your mind is not in line with him, you can go to church all you want to, uh, give all the tithes and offering you want to, but you may still be distant from him. How can two walk except they be in agreement? If Jesus is pursuing a bride that is pure and holy, you can be sure you're walking with him. If your thirst is, Lord, I want to keep my garment free from the things we heard from today. The love of money, the love and passion for the things of this world, the love of self. That is number one. Self-preservation, my pride, my reputation, my image, my ambitions. When we come to the Lord, we must set these things aside. How can two walk together? Impossible. Light and darkness will never mix. But what is happening a lot today is people have been told, or maybe not been told, the impression has been given it's possible. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. I was talking to someone the last few days, and as I was shit talking to him, he said to me, well, I'm, 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 not very, I'm, not, I'm a Christian, but not practicing. I believe the Lord just wants me to live my life and be good. And I said to him, that's actually the opposite of what the Lord says. You must die. Your life must die. That the life of Jesus must live in you. He, I don't think he ever heard anything like that. He just felt, yeah, I'm a good Christian, believe in the Lord and live my life. That's exactly the phrase he used to me. No. When you come to the Lord, the old person dies. That's what it means to be born again. The old person has died. Jesus now lives in me. I want to take seriously what I heard. I've heard the messages like this before, but I always go back. I'm going to read Revelation 7 again, 14 and 19. And uh, second, uh, uh, all the passages we heard today, Hebrews, Luke, all of it. The Lord, Lord brings it to my mind. Peter says, uh, give all diligence to make sure, to make your calling and election, election sure. Second Peter, I think chapter 3, it says that. Give all diligence to make your calling and election sure. In other words, check. Make sure. Make sure that you are in the path. I think that's a second Peter 3. I can't see it now. 14, yes. Um, diligent, what's it? One. Second Peter 1? Okay. Verse 10. Yes, second Peter 1, 10. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Make sure you're walking with him. If Jesus is Lord, follow him. You can't serve two masters. People are doing it. Christians are doing it. I don't want a surprise on that day. I want to follow him with all my heart. Amen. <clears throat> one of the um, things that Brother Zach was speaking one of the Wednesdays uh, when he was here that God is, a, God is a jealous God not zealous, jealous God and I was thinking about that and um, Deuteronomy 4.24 um, it says that for the Lord your God is a consuming fire and a jealous God and um, Another, another verse, in, I mean, there are so many other places, it says, Exodus 34, 14, For you shall not worship any other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. You know, among all the names that he has, like Wonderful Counselor, King of Kings, Emmanuel, you know, this, one of the names is Jealous. And, and he says, you, if you, you shall not worship any other God, for the, um, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. 
and um, he will not share his love and affection with anybody else. And uh, many years ago, um, I was at one of these conferences, and uh, uh, I'm back in my hometown. And um, and uh, during this one of the breaks, and you know, this man of God, whom I highly respect, was walking towards me, and he knows me, and I, and I thought um, he will give me a wonderful smile and say, "Hello, oh, Chetan, good to see you." And, uh, um, and he just looked at me and then he went away and uh, I was so sad I was like man I wish he could have given me a smile I was so um, you know hurt um, and I, I felt like the Lord speaking to me in my heart and I'm like Chetan why are you looking at somebody else's smile look at me I'm smiling at you and I'm, I looked at him and I, I saw the Lord smiling at me and I was never able to forget that and I was like um, I mean, the, the love that he has for me, he doesn't want to share with anybody else. Um, um, and um, sometimes we put our trust or our affections on uh, things around us. And um, when they disappoint us, you know, it will take us down along with us. Um, but when we keep our focus on him, uh, who is a jealous God, um, and his love is for me, um, then I will not be disappointed. And uh, uh, Isaiah 43, 1. Um, but now thus says the Lord, your creator, O Jacob, who he, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. You know, it's personal. You know, you are mine. And, and you see how jealous the Lord is. And um, he will not share with me, me with anybody else. And um, Isaiah 49, verse 19. Um, can a woman forget her nursing child and her, have no compassion on, on the son of a womb? Even these may forget, but I will not forget you. And when you think about the purest and greatest love that we can, selfless uh, form of love that we can find on earth, um, it's the love of a mother. You know, even if that child grows out to be a terrorist or, you know, most wicked person, that still that love of mother, you know, will never, you know, grow cold. And, and the Lord saying that take the best form of love in this world and I can beat it. You know, and, it and there is nothing, no stronger love than mine. And um, God is a jealous God. And um, Psalm, Psalms 139, 17 to 18. How precious are your thoughts towards me, O Lord. How vast is the sum of them. If I should count them, they will outnumber. When I'm awake, I'm still with you. And uh, that's something... Um, uh, I mean, uh, Second Corinthians 11 to 4, Paul says, I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy, you know, for I betroth you to one husband so that uh, to Christ I may present you as a pure virgin. Um, in all these things, the Lord, you know, we are his. We are his and um, he's a jealous God. You know, if, if there anything, any love comes between us, you know, it, it, it's... You know he he is jealous and um, and uh, we can we can see the jealousy as a evil term when it comes to I mean I, I'm jealous towards that brother which I don't have you know but when it comes to the Lord it's something precious you know that gives us so much joy and encouragement that um, I don't look for other forms of love you know um, and uh, the love that the Lord has for me is precious and um, and we love him because he first loved us and he loved us with that precious jealous love um, and um, may the Lord help us you know what from what we heard today you know like um, what a challenging word in this time that to uh, to have our undistracted and, and pure devotion for the Lord um, and uh, if we have something uh, that you know that are some distractions or attractions of this world you know putting all them aside um, keep keep uh, repenting of those things and um, going back to the Lord. Lord, I want this life. I want this life um, where you where you have a plan for me and um, that plan that I will follow you not just to be part of that you know that wedding celebration just to be a, a honored guest but to be part of that bride. Um, Lord, I don't I don't want anything less of that. You know, and uh, may the Lord help us and to. Uh, thank thank God for the desire that He uh, put in us, and uh, and I hope that that won't burn down. You know, uh, after we go home, and uh, um, you know, may the Lord help us and encourage each one of us. Amen.